It's a sunny day, it's weekend, the sun is shining, beautiful fields. Andy's here, say hello Andy. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> All right, enough talking, let's get in here. He brought uh, his FPV drones. He actually has more FPV drones than I do, and he started after I did with the whole drone thing, so I don't know how that worked out, but <laughs> I will catch up one day. He's got the TBS Oblivion, I think it is, right? It is, yes. Yeah, kind of looks like something out of uh, Star Wars when it's flying with the battery uh, mounted at the bottom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I will blur that. <laughs> He's also got the Happy Model Larva X, which is super fun. Can't wait to show you guys that one. And of course, I've got my uh, seven inch do-it-yourself belt rig that I showed you guys in the last video. Here we go! Some bole. All right, so we had quite a bit of fun. Let's head inside and I'll tell you guys how this thing actually works, what systems there are on board. It's kind of similar to having a Mavic Pro or a Mavic 2 Air. They all have to have similar systems. Of course, here you get to choose the components and kind of play around with it a little bit more than in an all-in-one like a uh, Mavic or a DJI camera drone. So let's head back in the studio and I'll tell you guys all about that. So what makes up an FPV style quadcopter? Well, you've got the frame, normally made out of carbon fiber and a bunch of electronics. We'll start with the ESC or the electronic speed controller. This is where the power from the battery kind of goes first and it gets distributed from here. Also, the ESC is connected to all your motors. So it sends the motors, the signals it needs to know what RPM and et cetera, how to spin it, all that stuff. Then you've got the flight controller. This is kind of the brain that is in the air for your drone or quad. This calculates with the gyro and accelerometer all the different inputs and sends the signal to the ESC to send to the motors. Additionally, your receiver, which receives the signal from the transmitter, is attached to the flight controller and that's how that communicates. Another thing you need is a video transmission system or VTX, made up of a camera and a way to get the signal to the ground and a video transmitter and that transmits the signal on a different frequency than your controls to your goggles so you can see what the drone sees. So as you can tell, quite a bit of stuff on here for GPS. And before we go further, <laughs> this does not enable you to get a perfect kind of precision landing return to home mode like we are used to with a Mavic or a Phantom. This is kind of different. Betaflight, which is the software that runs on the flight controller, it has something called GPS Rescue. And essentially this is made for if you were to fly at the edge of the kind of transmission signal for either the video feed or the transmission feed, then the drone is smart enough that when it happens, if you program it correctly, that the drone will kind of fly back to where it took off from towards you. And the hope is that it comes within your range and you can control it again and you can see again what the drone does. If you were to enable GPS rescue and not do anything, then the drone would come back towards you, kind of towards where you took off from, but not exactly maybe, and it'll lower its altitude as it gets close, and if you don't do anything, if you don't take over control again, it will crash somewhere around you at a relatively high speed. So it's definitely not kind of the return to home. Important to know. I also added something called a beeper. This is something that has its own kind of one cell LiPo battery on board, and if you crash this thing in a hay field, let's say, and you don't find it the first day and you go back the next day <laughs> and the battery got ejected and is 100 yards the other way or who knows where, this thing, if it's still attached to the drone, it has its own built-in battery and it will beep. It knows when it's kind of dark, it has a light sensor on it, and when it's nighttime, it doesn't beep as loud as during the day so it doesn't disturb people if there's houses nearby, for example. Anyways, this thing gives you the best chances of finding your drone if you have a crash and it happens to be kind of in the middle of nowhere and you obviously want to go back and find your drone. In the end, I wanted to build a reliable drone and if something were to go wrong, I wanted the best odds of getting the thing back. Now, it's interesting to know that there's no gimbal on this thing. The camera is essentially hard mounted to the frame. Now, this 3D printed material here is made of TPU, which is a little bit flexible, so some of the vibration can get reduced through that, but the experience is just different. It's not kind of 
super smooth, perfectly steady images. It's a different experience, it's FPV. There's software out there to kind of smoothen out your flight footage from your GoPro. review that in a future video as well, but that's also something that you can get later on. You don't have to get right away. I will be reviewing more affordable and smaller quadcopters in the future in the FPV space. I just wanted to share with you guys what I went with and why I went with it to get into this kind of cinematic FPV style of filming. It's just another tool in the arsenal to get kind of a new perspective in the air. And hey, I also wanted to geek out and build something for once. And it worked! Now, it wouldn't be a proper intro to FPV video without setting some realistic expectations. Just know that you will break props, you will break components at some point, you might even break a frame. And the thing might even not come back one day. Maybe one of the solder joints gets loose while you're flying and the control signals don't get transmitted correctly anymore and who knows what happens. The odds are slim, but it does happen, so just keep that in mind. In the future, I could show you guys how I built this specific one. I recorded most of that when I did it. So if you guys are interested, let me know in the comments below. The software that you run on the flight controller and on your computer to configure it is called Betaflight. And that's come a long way over the years. There's all kinds of algorithms in there that help you kind of smooth out vibrations and just all kinds of stuff. There's so much to configure. From a software side, it's quite amazing. And for a true nerd, um, it's pretty geeky and cool. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below what else you guys would like to see. Um, obviously, I will kind of do a, a comparison between the image quality and what kind of shots you can get between a camera drone and an FPV drone. There's a couple things that I recommend you guys pick up if you are getting into this hobby. Um, I've learned quite a bit of things. There's a couple things I would do differently. So I just want you guys to learn through my mistakes and I'll be putting out a couple more videos about this kind of stuff. And I think it's a lot of fun. <laughs> the lawnmower, we call that one. <laughs> oh, this is my alcoholfreies, that glints. Here we go. So if you're a geek like me and you want to build your own FPV drone or quad at some point, or maybe you just want to follow along and see what my experience is with it and how I went about building it and some of the products I use along the way, then I hope you'll consider subscribing. I can't wait to see you in the next video. In the meantime, that one is the latest, I think. This one is pretty good. You should definitely check out that one. Can't wait to see you guys in the next video.